while the persecution continued, the people of Mecca had something new to laugh about. And the Mu'mineen, subhanAllah, it increased their Iman. Verses were being revealed every single day. Revelation was coming. Most of the days, revelation was coming. Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam came down with verses. What type of verses were revealed in Mecca? All the stories of the prophets were revealed in Mecca. All the surahs which start with the separated letters were revealed in Mecca besides the first two. All of them. And what else? The short verses which have in them about belief. One Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Life after death. Heaven and hell. All this was revealed in Mecca to Al-Mukarramah. And what is going to happen in heaven and hell and so on. So to do with belief, the issue of the angels, the issue of destiny and so on. This was revealed in Mecca to Al-Mukarramah. This were the type or these were the type of verses that were revealed in Mecca. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Muslims really enjoyed, enjoyed the verses coming down. That was a comfort for them and they would forget the persecution. They would forget what happened because they would achieve the sweetness of these words and more and more were entering the fold of Islam. But quietly in a way that others don't know. And even if they got to know and they were persecuted, they did not mind. There came a time when Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had had enough. Now, he began to look for another base. He had tried out Ta'if, didn't work. Now he started going to the festivals of the Arabs. They used to have lots of festivals. Some of them known as Ukal and Mijannah and Dhul Majaz and some of them based in different places. But the biggest was during Hajj, the Muslim of Hajj. The festival or season of Hajj. What used to happen in these festivals? A few things. One is they were dealing products, buying, selling, you know, this way, that way. And another is each one used to boast and brag about their lineage and what they've achieved and their language and how powerful they were. And each one used to have his own poetry and the other one used to come and praise the poetry and the other one, another man came with better poetry. So they would turn to him and consider this one, that and this one. And they brought the news and tafakhur. They wanted to be one above the other. And that's why they got together to boast. It was like a show basically. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to go there and he used to seize the opportunity with Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu and sometimes some of the other companions at night he used to go to the dwellings, the tents where they used to sleep and he used to speak to them. Where are you people from? I am a messenger. I have brought from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a message to worship Allah alone and to uh, not to bury your daughters alive and to fulfill the covenant unto Allah, not to steal, not to cheat, not to commit adultery and so on. And some of them responded with great negativity and some of them responded with a little bit of positivity, meaning either way. And there were some people who actually went out back to Quraysh and told them that this man here is trying this and that. During the daytime, he would walk through. He would walk through these whilst the festivals going on and so on. And he would utter a loud Ayyuhannas, ya ayyuhannas, qulu la ilaha illallah, tuflihu. Same statement. Oh people, say there is none worthy of worship besides Allah and you will be successful. And he continued uttering. And you know, one of the leaders of Quraysh was known as Abu Lahab, an uncle of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Like a little child, he would run behind Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and scream. Hey, don't listen to this man. He's a madman. Hey, this man, he's a madman. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kept repeating these words. So people were watching. The one who really looks mad is the guy at the back, isn't it? Because he looks foolish. This man, let him do his thing. Come on, subhanallah. But this man who's supposed to be a leader of Quraysh running behind him saying, Hey, he's a madman. Watch out. He's going to di divert you from the worship of your forefathers and so on. And he came up with statement after statement. Wallahi, it was a joke. But people gathered around Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam without uttering. They didn't say we agree or we disagree. They heard. Now there was a difference between the people of Mecca and the people from elsewhere. The people of elsewhere in some cases had had the opportunity to mix with Jews or Christians. So to them it was not new if they heard about life after death. Because the pagans of Mecca did not believe in life after death. So when Muhammad came with a message to the people of Mecca telling them that there is a life after death, you are answerable for every action of yours. They laughed at it because they used to do as they wished. 
But the others, when they heard it, they were quiet. The reason is they had already heard it from others and they knew that there is something like this. So much so that the people of Medina, which was known as Yathrib at the time, it was renamed after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Al-Madina, Al-Madina al nabawiyya or Al-Madina al munawwara the city that is enlightened, the city that is lit up or the city of the Prophet. It has many, many names, subhanAllah. But the old name was Yathrib. They had mixed with the Jews and the Jews used to tell them that there is a Prophet that is about to be sent at this moment and we will follow him and we will fight together with him against you and we are going to destroy you like Ad and Thamud have been destroyed before. So they knew that there is something going to happen. When they heard this man, they were quiet. However, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as he continued, there were a few people who listened to him and he used to see them. He used to go out, as we said, quietly at night into their tents and have a good discussion with them. Look, I would like you to protect me from Quraysh. I'm a prophet of Allah and Allah will protect me, but I have been instructed to seek the assistance of people. So why don't you come and believe? Believe in Allah. We are calling towards goodness. We are not calling towards anything bad. We are calling towards that which will result in your success. So some of them showed a little bit of interest, but they were worried about their clans. Because remember, these were just small groups of people. Their clans were left back in their own areas. They had to have message from them to say, okay, bring the man forth and so on. We will look after him. Without that, there was no guarantee. So this is why some of them, they accepted Islam without saying openly that we've accepted Islam. From amongst them was a man known as Suwayd ibn Samit. When the Prophet ﷺ went to him and told him that, do you know, I am a messenger and I have with me something. He says, well, I also have something with me. So the Prophet ﷺ says, what do you have? He says, I have the words of Luqman, Luqman the wise. So the Prophet ﷺ says, okay, say them to me. So he started saying the words. You know, we have it in Surah Luqman. We have a whole Surah named after Luqman. According to us and according to the narrations and scholars, he was not a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but a wise man. And it is reported that he was from Sudan, from Noba, which is in Sudan. And he was a man who was very, very wise, granted wisdom by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Luqman. So when this man said the words of Luqman alayhi salatu was salam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said to him, I have something even better than that. So this man says, Suwayd ibn Samit says, what do you have? He says, I have Quran which is revealed and recited and it is full of meaning. So he says, okay, recite it. So the Prophet ﷺ began to recite the Quran. And this man after that did not leave the Prophet ﷺ. He didn't leave Nabi ﷺ. He accepted it without uttering that I've accepted this faith. He was worried. See, people at the time always worried about family and worried about what's going to happen. I'm going to be persecuted and so on. Up to today, the same worries. You have reverts who revert to Islam. Their families make life difficult for them. And their people expel them. And sometimes we as Muslims don't do any good to them because we look at them with skepticism. Why did this person accept Islam? You know, maybe they're here to spy on Islam and the Muslims. A'udhu Billah. So what? Most people who have spied on Islam have turned to real Islam. Subhanallah. Because after they come in to listen to what goes on in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they realize the Muslims are the ones, they don't waste time in the house of Allah. They don't speak about anything that is non-beneficial. They get straight to the point, they call you towards Allah and that's it. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to call towards Allah, not towards himself. So this man, he remained and thereafter he went back to his people in Medina. Suwayd ibn Samit was from Medina. He went back to his people in Medina. But he did not tell anyone. There was a huge war that took place after he went back. Known as Bu'ath. Yawm Bu'ath. It was a war that took place between Aws and Khazraj. And so many people were killed. He was one of them who was killed. And his people say, we bear witness that this man was a Muslim. Ever since he came back from that festival and he met Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he was not the same, he was a Muslim. So his people bore witness he was a Muslim, but he did not propagate the deen. That was one man. Then there were people from Banu Amir, a place in Sabah, in the Yemen region. They had come and there were good discussions between Muhammad and them. But there was a stumbling block. What was it? 
They said, okay, you're going to come to us in Yemen. We'll take you in. Everything will happen. Your message will go and you know, the people will accept it. But once they accept it and when you leave, everything must be handed to us and we must be in control of this whole new religion. That was the stumbling block. He said, no, Allah will decide what will happen to us and what will happen to leadership in this particular Ummah. So you can't say that now you will start controlling all the people from everywhere who are going to accept the message. So they said, well, if that's the case, why should we sacrifice? Why should we sacrifice? And then when you are gone, the honor must go to someone else. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us honor. Today you can be an Arab or you can be a non-Arab. You can be an African or an Asian or an American or a European. You can be anything you want. The, the honor and dignity that Allah grants you through Islam is something that goes beyond the boundaries or the limits or the lines of race. Completely beyond. So Allah grants honor to a person who comes from anywhere on the globe. He can be from the subcontinent, from Australia, no matter where. Today, the globe is a small little village. We know people who we've never met, but we know them through the internet, subhanallah. And what happens? Allah has granted them such a high status through Islam, and yet they are of a totally different race. Imagine if this was only blocked to one race to say, you want to know anything about religion? You must only do it through the Chinese. One wonders what would happen. Allah protect us. I don't know what made me say China. But there are a lot of Muslims in China as well. Millions of them, subhanAllah. May Allah protect them and grant them ease and goodness. Since we've mentioned them, we mentioned that people are being persecuted on the globe and they are still keeping their deen. With us, mashallah, look at us. We're sitting in the house of Allah as free as anything. We're not persecuted at all. Alhamdulillah. Thank Allah and make use of these days by getting closer to your maker. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So those were the people of Banu Amir. There was another believer who believed in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was a young boy who came in a group of people, the group of Anas ibn Rafi' who was also known as Abu al-Haysar. And they had come, this young boy's name was Iyas ibn Mu'adh. And he came as a young boy and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam met them at the festival and he presented Islam to them, read some Quran to them, told them that these people were from, they had actually come in order to strike a treaty with Quraysh so that they could be protected from Khazraj in Medina because they were fighting. So they went to Quraysh to say, look, you know what? Their intention was to go and say, we want you to protect us from these people and please can you help us? So when the Prophet ﷺ heard that these people had come to meet Quraysh, he quickly went to them and he presented Islam to them and said, I am a messenger and I am a person who is sent by Allah. And my message, I'm not calling towards myself. I'm calling towards worshipping the maker, the cherisher, nourisher, sustainer, creator, the one whom we are going to return to. Worship him and worship him alone. So what happened is, these people from Medina, they had known because they had heard this from the Jewish people and the people of the book whom they had interacted with in the past and who were living in that region. So this young boy known as Iyas ibn Mu'adh, he says to the others, this man is right. He is saying he has to offer something better than what you have come for. You came for signing a treaty with Quraysh. Sign a treaty with your maker. Better. So Iyas says, yes, it's good. But this man, the leader of that group, got up and scolded him, said, hey, keep quiet, don't be distracted. And they carried on. So this young boy, he had Iman in his heart. When he went back to Medina, he also died after the day of Bu'ath, the day of that war that took place. He died as well, a young boy known as Iyas ibn Mu'ad. And his companions say that this man, we could hear him at night declaring the greatness of Allah. Tasbih and Tahleel and Takbir. Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. We could hear him say this, which means he was a Muslim. And the Prophet ﷺ confirmed this also in a narration. He was the second person who had accepted Islam but was unable to propagate the message. So this was the first, the beginnings of Islam in Medina Munawwara, but it was not spread until Allah favored the people of Medina. That day of Bu'ath, there was such a great war that most of the leaders were killed. Now when the leaders are gone, what happens? There is a bit of chaos. When the leaders are there and Islam is presented to them, what did they used to say in, in Makkah? They used to say, no ways, we're going to lose our chair, our seat. 
You know, when there's a man sitting on a chair, he doesn't want anyone else to sit on that chair. It happens. So for as long as he's alive, there's no hope. The minute he's dead, what will happen? There is a lot of hope because now things can change. Allahu Akbar. So this is what happened in Medina Munawwara. When the, those leaders were dead, they were looking for someone to lead them. They were divided into two main clans, Al Aws and Khazraj. These two used to fight forever and ever. They've always been fighting and they were at war. They killed so many of one another. Now that there was a massive war where so many of their leaders had passed away, there was a little bit of a stalemate and they were just licking their wounds and counting their losses. And in the meantime, the festival happened. When that festival happened, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam met a group of six of them. We need to remember these six. Subhanallah. He told them, where are you from? They said, we're from Yathrib. Can I sit and talk to you for a little while? He said, yes. You know, if we sit and read the, the etiquette of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as a messenger, how he sat with these people, how he presented Islam, how he respected them, how he answered their questions, we will learn a lot of diplomacy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that. How we speak to people is very important. Sometimes this tongue can destroy a home, a house, because we don't know how to talk. And what, what can happen, subhanallah, because we've used our tongue correctly, we can build relations even with people who may be enemies. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. So he met six people and he sat down and had a chat with them. He gave them the story of Islam. These six were As'ad ibn Zurara radiyallahu anhu, later on to be known. Awf ibn al-Harith, Rafi ibn Malik, Qutbah ibn Amir, Uqba ibn Amir and Jabir ibn Abdullah. These were people from Khazraj. When they were told in the 11th year of prophethood that this is the message of Allah and there is heaven and there is hell and you are answerable and so on. They told each other, do you know what? This is what the Jews are speaking about all the time. And now that the Jews have always been telling us there's a prophet about to come, we've got a feeling this is the man and let us believe in him quickly because the message is exactly what they have been saying it would be. And if we believe in him, subhanallah, we will be successful. The six of them accepted Islam and they went back to their people and started teaching Islam. Inshallah, tomorrow we will see how the migration to, Mac to Medina Munawwara had started and how it occurred by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah bless us. May he bless not only this, these six whom we have just mentioned, but all those who struggle and strive for the deen. And may he make us from amongst them. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi subhanakallahum wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Unlock spiritual enrichment with One Islam TV app. Immerse yourself in a unique experience that is music free, fully halal, and continuously updated with fresh content daily. Enjoy a user friendly experience with features that allow you to save your favorite videos, create personalized playlists, and download and watch your content offline. Download the One Islam TV app now and embark on a transformative journey where faith and entertainment unite.